Okay, right, this is week one of the of the four hour e-commerce site course uh, in which we're going to teach you how to start selling with WordPress. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the initial setup first. Um, the first thing you've got to do is to get a domain name. If you haven't got a domain, uh, you're going to find it difficult to do anything really. So uh, there's a couple of sites at which you can do that. There's Namecheap and GoDaddy. And uh, if I bring up a window, I'm just going to show you those sites and basically talk you through the process that you need to follow to uh, to get a domain name set up. So if I go into namecheap.com, if I go into my account on there, you can set up an account fairly easily. You can see that um, you can buy domain names. .com is ideal. Um, .net is possible. Um, it's various domains that I have. Um, now, what what you would do? A lot of the domain names are obviously taken. So, uh, whatever your niche is, you'll want to you'll want to either have a domain name corresponding to your niche, which might be, for example say your niche was programming it might be something like programlistings.com and you can do a search and uh, see if that's available um, which it isn't uh, unsurprisingly or you might want a generic domain name it, it uh, really depends on what you intend to sell um, now a generic one might be well something like the dojo tool that I've got or maybe um, do you meet I, I don't know you, you just make something up basically I mean that's that's where amazon.com came from that's where google.com came from if you happen to want demeet.com then that's fine I mean basically you just uh, Personally, I would recommend using Namecheap for it. You you enter your domain name, do a search here. Um, if you find one that's available and you want to buy it, you just add to cart, go through the process. Um, you enter your uh, credit card details, or you can use PayPal and all that sort of stuff, and. Uh, uh, and that's uh, that's how you get a domain name. The other uh, service provider you can use, there's plenty of them. GoDaddy is uh, is another one that you may want to use, but uh, I haven't heard that they're the best providers. So uh, so that uh, it's a similar process, though. Um, there are certain optional extras that these sites tend to charge for like um, protection for your who is identification because you do need to provide them with your name address and these details are usually published they're usually published so that uh, someone can do a who is search and find out who is behind who is operating who is who is the owner of that domain um, you might want to do that. I don't personally uh, go for any protection services, but that's uh, that's up to you. Um, you're going to need to obtain a hosting account, and you need PHP and MySQL supports in that hosting account. Usually, it'll be using a Linux server rather than the Windows server. Uh, cPanel is handy but not essential and uh, I'll show you what I mean by cPanel um, Typic now there's three options um, Shared hosting is the cheapest option and what happens there is you get space on the server 
that's shared with a number of other accounts. So one server may be serving the accounts of 50 customers or some number like that, maybe 20. It depends really on, on the hosting service. VPS is a virtual private server. That's a tier up and what you get with that is um, basically you you get um, a virtual server running on a full server so you get a guaranteed amount of memory um, usually you get more hard drive space that is um, a slightly more expensive option probably worth going for if you envisage having a large amount of traffic dedicated server is very expensive comparatively speaking but if you get a, a real huge amount of traffic then you're definitely going to want to investigate that option and and if you really do have that much traffic chances are you're going to be making a great deal more in terms of uh, money than the price of a dedicated server package um host gator and dreamhost.com are typical providers of this service i don't have accounts with them just because i've got a couple of special accounts but uh, if i just uh, click through to to those two sites i can show you exactly what you're looking at getting so you're going to need to set up a hosting plan and uh, if I view the web hosting plans now you can see that uh, you've got various different plans HostGator has a good reputation um, I've seen the occasional bit of bad press but mostly everything I've seen from them is good they they are reputable uh, they provide you with um, very good services it is shared hosting that you get here um, you don't need to worry about an SSL certificate that that is um, what would provide you with the padlock icon that uh, that people look for when they're dealing with e-commerce sites but the reason you don't need it is you'll be selling through providers that that will display that padlock icon for you for example if you're using PayPal um, what will happen in the checkout process is the customer will click through to PayPal and uh, they will actually buy your product through PayPal so uh, you don't need to worry about that um, you could start off with hatchling plan the only real difference between the hatchling plan and the baby plan are that with the hatchling plan you can only use one domain with the baby plan you can use any number of domains but uh, that's something you can you can upgrade as you go okay so you're looking at ten dollars a month for the baby plan or nine dollars a month for the hatchling plan you can reduce these prices by going for a longer period I don't think you need to worry about the business plan I wouldn't go for that level um, and the other one was dreamhosts.com dreamhosts you don't get cPanel access which might be handy because most uh, most scripts that you might install tend to have instructions that assume you've got cPanel access but uh, otherwise they are they're a very similar hosting service 